Taiwan is bursting with heaps of fun places to explore. Join me, Amber Hatfield, as I hit up travel spots, soak up some culture, and hunt down hidden gems. Let's go! Hi there! Welcome to the first episode of my new show, Let's Go. I'm super excited to be here and making this show for you all about Taiwan and the great destinations that you can travel to when you come here. I want to start this episode off by introducing myself and a little bit about my life in Taiwan and also my background and why I'm so in love with travel. And then later on in the show, I will take you to a place called Fulong Beach in northern Taiwan. Okay, so first, a bit about me. So I think I've always been interested in travel ever since an early age. And although when I was a child, my parents never really took us on foreign holidays. We mostly took our holidays in the UK. But um, when I was maybe around 10 years old, we started to take some holidays in Europe and that's, I think, where I got my early love for travel from. So I remember one of the earliest holidays that I went on abroad with my family was to the Greek island of Rhodes. It's absolutely beautiful. And I remember that trip being something that was so different for me from the UK and from anything that I'd ever experienced before. Rhodes quite famously has these whitewashed houses with blue roofs and you may have seen them in paintings or pictures of Greece and they're absolutely gorgeous and they just feel inspiring when you see it. So I remember walking through these small cobbled streets between these houses and just being so happy to be there. The beaches there had this dark blue mixed with a turquoise blue water that just looked like you almost want to drink it and so refreshing. I remember the contrast with the orange cliffs and I remember jumping in, splashing into the water as a kid with my parents and having the best time. Another thing that really struck me too was the different smells that I smelled. So the nighttime, they would have these smell of the plants, different kind of plants or uh, trees that you don't have in the UK. And even to this day, if I go somewhere and I smell a similar smell, I get taken back to that time. I also thought the food was fantastic. I loved the Greek food. And if you know, many people say that British food is pretty terrible. I can't say I agree. I love a good sandwich. But I do think that one part of traveling that I absolutely adore is being able to experience the variety of foods and cuisines that you wouldn't normally get to experience in your home country. And that's something I'll also love to talk about on this show with you all about Taiwan's foods and what fantastic food options you can explore while you're here. Another trip that I remember really inspiring my love for traveling was one that we took to Italy when I was about 13 years old. We went to the Sistine Chapel and saw the painted ceiling by Michelangelo and we also visited the Rome Colosseum as well as going to Pompeii. I found those destinations really awe-inspiring especially for me as a teenager, and learning about the history behind those places and what happened also made me have an appreciation for the history of other countries too. So I think that's something really important about traveling is not just to, you know, have fun and enjoy yourself, which obviously is important, but also to learn about what you're looking at, learn the story behind things and also the history. I think it's such a great opportunity to become more aware of other cultures and other countries other than your own. So throughout the show, I'll also be sharing some historical information about Taiwan and the places I visit. So continuing on the little introduction about me and why I'm so interested in traveling, I couldn't miss out talking about South Africa. So South Africa is the first country that I visited outside of Europe. I went there because my best friend from my school was from South Africa originally and moved back there when I was about 18 years old and went to university. So in my first summer from university, I had saved up money from working uh, in a restaurant and I took my trip to South Africa to visit her. I ended up going back multiple times actually for months at a time to visit and travel in South Africa. 
And South Africa kind of brought something different to the table for me in terms of what I was interested in during traveling. So on top of great food and also the historical elements, South Africa has amazing nature and natural wonders. So that was the thing that really stood out for me when I went there. South Africa has such a variety of landscapes. And one of the places that I was lucky enough to visit was Kruger National Park, which is one of the famous national parks in South Africa, where you can see the big five. And I was lucky enough to see elephants, lions, rhinos, giraffes, and a whole host of other animals when I went there. And I'm a big nature lover, so whenever I go traveling, I always look out for where I can see or inspiring scenery and natural wonders and also animals as well. And that's stuff you can find in Taiwan. Taiwan has awesome nature, really great trails, uh, fantastic hiking, as well as some interesting animals that you can see too. Now, there are plenty more places that are actually on my list to talk about, about why I love travel so much. The next place is somewhere I went after I finished university. After I finished my university, I decided to go to Australia for a year. Australia was somewhere that I'd always wanted to go to and imagined it being filled with, you know, surfers, really great beaches. And also another thing was the wildlife that I expect to see in Australia. So koalas and kangaroos and other things like that. So I ended up going to Australia for one year and traveling around and also working. And I found Australia as well to be a fantastic country for traveling. Um, After I finished my year in Australia, I decided to travel around Southeast Asia. So I traveled around Southeast Asia um, for around three months. I started in Singapore, I went to Malaysia, Thailand, Cambodia, and Vietnam, and then ended up my trip in Taiwan. And that was the first time I set foot in Taiwan, and I have lived here ever since that. I was originally only going to stay in Taiwan for one year, and now it's been eight years. Wow, the time has really gone so quickly. It's absolutely flown by. I don't even know how that happened. So be prepared. If you come to Taiwan, you might end up staying a lot longer than you plan to. And during these eight years in Taiwan, I have really been lucky enough to be able to travel a lot. I travel around most of the island and as well to Taiwan's outlying islands. So Taiwan actually has uh, quite a few outlying islands like Green Island, Xiaoliaojiu, uh, Orchid Island, uh, Penghu, as well as uh, Jinmen and Matsu Islands. Those are the only two that I haven't actually had a chance to go to yet. So I'm hoping that I will have the opportunity to go to those two islands and introduce them to you on this show, which will be so much fun and a new adventure for me as well. During my time in Taiwan and being able to visit all these beautiful and culturally rich places, I think that they're really worth sharing. And that's what I want to bring to you. So on the show, I'm excited to be sharing Taiwan through my eyes and also through the eyes of other people, including some of the RTI hosts and other friends and travelers in Taiwan too. If you're looking for tips about where to go in Taiwan, or if you just want to learn more about Taiwan and different places, the history and the culture, the food, then this is the place to be. So that brings us to the present day. And thank you for joining me on my journey about why I love travel and why I want to share about travel in Taiwan with you. So today I'm going to share about a recent trip that I took to Fulong in northern Taiwan. So without further ado, let's go. So today I'm taking you on a journey to a great spot called Fulong Beach. Fulong Beach is probably the most famous beach in northern Taiwan and actually became famous during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. It's really easily accessible from Taipei. It takes about an hour to get to Fulong on the train from Taipei. You can also take buses as well, but the train is pretty convenient and that's how I've always gotten there. So Fulong Beach faces the Pacific Ocean and it actually has golden sand. You might see that quite a lot of beaches in Taiwan have a darker colored sand because of the kind of rocks that the sand is made from. But Fulong Beach has this lovely golden sand and it's actually one of the most popular tourist beaches in northern Taiwan because of its proximity to Taipei and how easy it is to get there for a day trip. 
The main beach at Fulong is pretty interesting. There's actually a bridge that has been built over onto the beach because the beach is kind of split from the mainland by an inlet of water. So you have to walk over that bridge to get to the beach. However, Fulong Beach is not actually free to visit, but it does require a very small entrance fee. Now, the main beach is where people go often to see the sand sculptures. Every year there is the Fulong International Sand Sculpture Art Festival on the beach where people make sand sculptures of various different characters from movies like Disney characters and princesses and castles and things like that. It's really cool to see but the festival actually runs from June to October. However, I would recommend that if you want to see the sand sculptures intact, that you would visit earlier on in the year. Because later on in the year, the sand sculptures might have got destroyed by the weather, maybe by typhoons and things like that. So if you want to see them in all their glory, definitely visit earlier, maybe in June or July. But if you're not so interested in the sand sculptures and you'd like to stay away from the crowds, you can also access other beaches that aren't the main beach that are free to get to and very relaxing too. Which is actually where I spent my weekend this weekend, as there was a big event happening on the main Fulong Beach and I just didn't really feel like getting into all those crowds. You can set up on the beach and enjoy your Fulong lunchbox which is what I ate this time. When you come out of the train station in Fulong, you can go to any of the lunchbox stores and buy this yummy bian dang or lunchbox, which includes pork, rice, veggies, egg, tofu, and is a really perfect picnic lunch while you enjoy your relaxing day at the beach. So I hope you have the chance to visit Fulong if you're in Taipei, because it's really worth it. Thanks for joining me today on my first episode of Let's Go, and I hope to see you next time. Bye!